All right, here we are. Not at the racetrack. What happened, Joe? Weather, rain. So we got down there Friday. Yeah, Friday. And it rained Friday morning. Got there, got to the track, unloaded. It was a little wet out, but they had the track dry. Everything was good. We made some test passes. Um, I'll put those in here in a sec, but I'll kind of go through the story real quick. Test passing, testing went good. Um, and then the next day, you know, we we're hopeful. It looked like the rain was going to move out early. We're like, yeah, we're going to be racing tomorrow. Wake up, fog, bad fog. Oh man, so the weather showed that, hey, the fog's gonna lift around noon, everything's gonna be good. We all get to the track about one o'clock. Uh, the racer gates were supposed to open at one o'clock. Get to the track, foggy, bad fog, can't see nothing. Um, I, was, I'm, I think I have a picture, I'll show the picture when uh, we were kind of waiting. Talked to Kevin and David, they're like, well, we don't know, we're gonna give a little bit. They talked to the one of the track owners, the lady. She's like, oh, we would already cancel, it's like, can't get the track dry, fog's not gonna lift. So, you know, they waited till 2.30, I think, 2, 2.30. And finally, you know, they canceled it. Like, fog's not gonna lift. It just rained some more. The track had a whole bunch of standing water. The pits were a mess. So they canceled it. And nothing you can do, it stinks. Um, it is what it is. So, we'll, um, got the car in the trailer, you know, it's ready to go for the next race. I'll, I'll see what I'm doing. I don't know when I'm going to race again or what's what's going to happen. I'll kind of go through that. I have some ideas. I just got to figure out what's going on. I got a lot of projects in the garage. Going to figure all that out. So I guess from here, I'll show you. We have a little bit of footage um, that we got. So I'll show those here. Um, I, I talked a little bit before we started racing or testing. All right, here we are, XRP Extreme Raceway Park. Uh, we are testing for the flashlight shootout. It's tomorrow on Saturday. Um, they opened it up for testing night, so we decided to come out and do some testing. We'll see how it does. Car is ready, cleaned, and I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Um, the weather's perfect, it's nice, cool. A uh, little rainy, but I think it's gonna be good. The forecast for tonight's good. Oh, I, th I think we're gonna go uh, try to get some good a to B passes. I don't think the track's going to be killer tomorrow. It's going to be good. I don't think the track's going to be killer, so I just need to get a bunch of good A to B tune-ups. So I got some first round tune-ups ready to go. There's a chance of rain tomorrow, so I don't know if we're going to get our testing. So I just want to be ready to go off the trailer. And yeah, we'll see how it does. I added all the new sensors. We'll kind of go over it as I uh, make some passes tonight. I'll show the data from the new sensors and kind of what I'm looking for as I'm tuning in and going through it. So yeah, let's uh, go see how it does. First pass, so I'll talk a little bit about each pass. First pass, get up there, I'm just looking for an A to B tune-up. Um, nothing special to it, I'm looking to get down. I know XRP, they can have really good prep, it just rained and stuff, you know, it, it, we're gonna see where we stood. I wanted a good off the trailer pass, a good first round pass, one something decent in the 60 foot, somewhat quick, but not gonna blow the tires off. And then, you know, I made sure I had Ron, the guy with me, take the video from the back. We want to see how the suspension is working visually. I'm also going to look at the logs and kind of go over that. So here's uh, the first pass. Great first pass, I was really happy. Um, went a good time, good 60 foot, nice and straight, just easy, good first pass, perfect. Got a good starting point. So now let's try to kill it. Let's let's turn it up and let's see what we'll do. Um, we waited about an hour, let it cool down. I turned up everything, turned up the two-step, I turned up the boost, launch boost, turned up all the boosts, just uh, took out some of the timing retard on the launch, just all around, let's go fast. Um, a guy there had been having some problems with some oil spraying. I don't know if this played into a factor. I think it all played into a factor. There was a guy that was having some oil problems spraying oil, not like dripping oil, just kind of misting maybe. I think they were having some problems. And then the track hadn't been prepped for, you know, an hour or so. Not a lot of cars going on. There wasn't a lot of heat. So, I mean, it, it wasn't going to hold this tune up. But I want to try see where I was at with the track. So he, here's the second pass.
Yeah, not so much. Wasn't going anywhere. I was, I was trying to get after it. So, like, okay, we need to dial it back down. Uh, we need to, you know, if the track stays like that, we need to kind of get a, a grasp on it. So I dialed back the launch, um, you know, kind of closer to the, where my first pass was, but I wanted to get more aggressive getting out there. I loosened up the suspension too. So, you know, maybe I can get a little more weight transfer out of it. Um, loosen up the shock so it'll come up a little quicker, try to get it planted, get it going. And yeah, so here's pass three. You can see I let out, you know, that was probably 3.30, halfway down the track, I let out. It, um, it's starting to get a little a little squirrely. I'd wondered, you know, maybe if something had gotten on the track, whatnot. We were just testing. I was mainly worried about the first, you know, part of the track. Anyways, it was a really good pass. Good 60 foot, really getting some power in after it. Everything was good. So all in all, those are the three passes we made. Great time at the track, three good passes. I felt really good, had a lot of good data to go into the race day. And then rain came, there's nothing you can do. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna go over now, I'll show you kind of the holly. First test pass. I'm coming in here and looking. So here's the first bar. I got, you know, the sensors that I added over here. I changed the stator. So first pass, I'm not on a ton of power. I was leaving, you know, 4,100 RPMs or so. And I wanted to see what it was flashing to on the new stator. So we're about 6,000 on the flash. Maybe a little higher, 6100, but that's a lot better. The old converter was a little tighter, and it was flashing, you know, about the same, about 6000, but the shift, it was dropping a little too much on the shift, and it was holding it up in high gear. And I say this, but I'm talking very small amounts, fractions. We were, we were really trying to fine-tune this. We felt that the uh, stator had cost me maybe a couple mile an hour versus, you know, the first one I'd gotten from them that was pretty loose. So, you know, we were trying to correct that, and I do feel like we were in the right thing. Off the trailer, I short-shifted it, you know, like 7,800 or so, um, and it dropped down to 7,200. So it wasn't dropping a huge amount, and I don't feel like it was pulling down the motor after the shift. So after the first pass, I checked it off. I was like, yep, nope, stator feels good. I'm going to, I think I'm going to rock this one, especially as I pour more power into it. I was on a pretty conservative tune-up here. Yes, it was still a lot of boost. Yes, it still went really quick, but compared to my on kill, it was kind of soft. So then I'm looking at the drive shaft data. This is all new. I mean, look how good that data is. My old one was pretty bad. You can see, you know, hits a, the tires a little bit on the shift. Um, but yeah, th this data is really, really, really good compared to my old one. So really happy with the data on it. And, you know, check mark as well. So drive shaft sensor is good. Shock sensors. I'd messed with the shock sensors, so I was really looking for the data on this one. You can see I have two rear shock sensors. That's these bottom ones, and then I have one front sensor. That's the top one. All of them working great. Great, good data. Um, happy with all that as well. So, I mean, check mark, check mark, check mark. Everything's good so far. And then the last thing's the G meter. Let me add it on the top screen here. So here's the G meter. Um, it's working great as well. So, and what did it pull? 2.3 G's on the launch. This was, you know, a, a pretty good 60 foot. I mean, it was nothing crazy. I want to say, uh, I don't remember. I'll have to check. But yeah, I mean, it, it, this was a good solid pass. I was very happy for an off the trailer pass. Good, good data. Everything worked good. So I was really happy. So now let's compare this to the third pass. The second pass you saw, I spun. So let's compare this to the third pass. So here's the third pass. Let's sync them up. Oh, I hate when it does this. Why doesn't it just work, you know? Give me a sec. Okay, so synced up. Um, you can see I let out the dotted lines are the third pass. The other ones are the solid line is the first pass. So you can see a dotted line third pass. I definitely had some more power into it. It flashed a little higher um, on here, you know, 6,100 maybe or so on the flash. 
61, 6200 maybe on the flash. Um, you know, here I'm beating it by a couple hundred RPMs. The drive shaft's going a little faster. Everything was going good on this pass. It was definitely a faster pass. More boost, not a lot, but you know, more aggressive ramp, more boost. You can see on the front, so this line right here, I'm colorblind, I don't know if that's blue or purple, but this, this line up here, um, you can tell I loosened up the front suspension and I gave it a little more travel. So you see the dotted line, it comes up quicker and goes up a little higher. So that's me just trying to get it to come up a little faster, plot a little harder and make sure I don't spin. Let's turn off one of these rears so you can just see one of the rears. There we go. And same with the rear. I loosened up the extension on the rear as well to try to let the rear end extend and plant those tires a little more and keep them planted. So you can see they come up a little quicker and they extend a little more. Um, you can tell, you know, we can go over it. What well, I'm getting, you know, 1.3 is my resting ride height in the rear. And it's extending up to 3.3, 3.4. So I'm getting about two inches of extension. Um, you know, I think that's pretty well average. On some stuff, I go more and go three plus. On some stuff, I go a little tighter and maybe only get like an inch and a half. Just depends on what race I'm doing. I am trying to work out this little bump right here. Um, this thing's kind of haunted me for a while on the car where it starts to extend, kind of hangs tight, and then finishes extending. And you can see it in the drive shaft data too. It's like it, you know starts to you know slip a little and then grabs or you know kind of shocks the suspension i don't know i'm, I'm working on I'm talking to some people i'm trying to figure that out but in a nutshell this is kind of where where i'm at on the car all the sensors work great everything worked great oh let's look at that g meter too you can see oh yep definitely getting a better 60 foot so we were 2.4 almost 2.5 g's on the third pass so it definitely was hitting harder um everything was going good i i think it would have been a pretty pretty good lick it um it hit the tires a little bit on the shift and i i don't know something out there on the track or some oil or i don't know but it kind of kind of wiggled around and i just let out i was just testing i just needed the first part through the shift anyway so no big deal but everything was looking good on it, and I felt really good with all the data. So I was ready for race day. It is what it is. This is where we ended up. But that, that quick overview of some of the data and what I was looking at as I was going through on the new sensors. Obviously, I'm also looking at a ton on the backside. This is just what I'm showing you guys. But I'm, uh, you know, and we'll go over that in maybe another one where I'm looking at boost numbers and air fuel numbers and fuel consumption and EGTs and the rest of the you know tuning side of it but this time i was more focused on this because these are all the changes i just made to the car and y'all saw in the race prep video all right so that's uh all i got sorry uh no racing um you know it is what it is there's nothing we can do it sucks but it's the weather it's springtime it's texas whatever so, you know, car's ready. Here it is. It's ready to go racing. We'll, we'll see uh, where it ends up. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to race next weekend. I got a lot to do. I got some issues with the trailer I got to address. I would need to change some stuff on the car if I was going racing next weekend. I got a lot of work in the garage I got to do. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see where we end up. But this is what I got. Just wanted to do a short video out there real quick for y'all. Show you the racing uh, tuning or the logs and what I'm looking for. And that's about all I got. So, you know, hey, stay tuned for the next one. And we'll kind of see where we go from here.